Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Bruce Brown, and today I'm going to be talking to you about building a flexible matchmaking solution. A little bit about me. Uh, I'm the manager of the Amazon GameLift Flex Match team. Uh, I've been in the software industry now for about 12 years. Uh, I've worked at Xbox and Riot Games prior to coming to Amazon. I'm currently enjoying playing uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild with that little guy there. So uh, what is Amazon Game Tech? Like, what are we doing here at uh, GDC? I've got a little slide here that, that talks a bit about that before I dive into matchmaking. Uh, Amazon Game Tech brings solutions from across Amazon for every stage of your game's life cycle. Uh, we have uh, global and infrastructure services. This includes AWS game servers, analytics, core backends. Uh, in addition, we have pre-built game services and tools. This is where GameLift and FlexMatch, what I'll be talking with you guys today about, uh, falls. Uh, we have content creation tools. This is Lumberyard and some of those other things that you're probably familiar with. And finally, we have distribution and marketing. These are different channels that we have available to you to help you guys get your games up and running and into the sales channels. So now let's dive into matchmaking solutions for your game. As you know, matchmaking is challenging, right? Uh, it's the main funnel into your game, and players expect a lot. Uh, they want to be matched immediately into competitive matches with no lag. So as a game developer, here are the things that, that you're going to need to balance when you're uh, considering matchmaking solutions for your game. First of all, wait time. Uh, this is the amount of time that it takes players to find a match once they've submitted a matchmaking request. Uh, competitiveness, this is the relative skill level of players uh, within the match. Player latency is the amount of time that it takes players uh, to uh, send information to and receive information from game servers. And finally, cost. Uh, this is the amount of money required for you to host matches uh, on a uh, game server. So uh, low wait times, competitive matches, uh, low match latency, uh, these things are, are pretty easy to achieve in isolation. But trying to balance them all at once can be pretty challenging. So let's take a look at some examples. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about uh, a single matchmaker and queue. So uh, let's say your game wants to prioritize low wait time with competitive matches. Uh, wait time and competitive matches can be inversely proportional, right? So the longer you uh, wait, uh, for a, you, the longer you wait, the more competitive a match can be, and vice versa. So uh, you want to decide for your game um, how to maximize the chance of uh, finding a match with both of these constraints, essentially by putting players, uh, let's say, into a single matchmaking queue uh, with game servers spread out throughout the world. So what does that look like uh, on GameLift and AWS? So uh, GameLift is uh, currently located in 14 of the 15 AWS regions. And let's say you decide for your matchmaker to pick US West 2. Uh, in this example, you would then have players that are spread out throughout the world, and those players would be sending matchmaking requests to that one matchmaker in US West 2. There, they would be grouped into matches, and then the lowest latency server worldwide, which in this case might be in London, uh, would be selected, and then those players would be able to connect, uh, connect to that server. So uh, with this solution, you've got some pros and you've got some cons. Uh, the main pro here is that with more players to choose from, you can find more competitive matches, right? The size of your player pool is larger, so you've got more players that you can choose from. And generally, you can do that a bit faster. If you have more players, there's more options to be able to find matches with your matchmaking algorithm. The main con here, however, is that players from different geographical regions might experience some high latency uh, in this situation. And so that's a trade-off that you're going to need to make. So let's look at how we can kind of start to balance these things uh, with FlexMatch and the rule sets, uh, rules language that we offer. So um, you can customize rules with FlexMatch, and I'll walk through a brief example of what that looks like. So you've got some, uh, at the top here, just some, some bookkeeping. Um, and then we dive into kind of the, the bulk here of the, uh, the rule set. The first thing you have is player attributes. So this is the player data that's going to be associated with your matchmaking request. In this case, we're looking at skill data. And so you might have a determination for skill for your game. And for each player, you're going to pass in the skill value of that player uh, into the match. Next, you'll set up the teams. So in this case, we're setting up a red and a blue team uh, with min players of three, max players of five. And then we get into the, to the kind of the meat of the rule set here, the rules themselves. So in this case, what we want is we want uh, to have a, a, a balance in the competitiveness of the match. So we've created here uh, a fair team skill rule. 
And essentially what this does is it does some math on that uh, input data uh, from the, the skill data that you're passing in on the matchmaking request. And what it does is it takes the average skill of each player on the team, it then compares that to this reference value that it calculates, which is the average skill of all players within the match, and it sees if the current player that's trying to be matched into that match is within a distance of 10 of the rest of the players in the match. If the, the, that player is, then they're joined to the match. If not, then they'll be um, uh, not joined to the match. In addition to team skill, I've got a second rule here, uh, fast connection. So this is to prefer matches with uh, fast player connections first. It's a latency rule, and this says essentially, for players that have 50 milliseconds or less latency, let's add them to the match. If they don't meet that requirement, then they will not be added. So you can see, uh, with just a, a couple lines of code here, uh, you can quickly set up uh, skill-based matchmaking uh, that considers latency uh, for your players in the match. Now, let's say you want to start to balance these things, right? Like you're finding, uh, after you look at some metrics from FlexMatch, that it's actually taking longer than you'd like for players to find matches with these requirements. So there's different things you can do. You could quickly go and you could say, oh, hey, it looks like that fair team skill is actually rejecting players for matches a lot. Let's take that and let's set it to 20. Something else you can do, though, if you want to just turn over that responsibility to FlexMatch is in this uh, last section of the rule set here called the expansion section. What we can do is we can actually expand and relax the requirements of these rules over time automatically for you. And so what this first expansion does is it says, OK, let's take a look at that max latency rule and let's wait 10 seconds. If we still don't have a match within 10 seconds with the current group of players, we'll go ahead and relax that value from 50 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds. Again, after 20 seconds, we'll relax that again now to 150 milliseconds. So this is an example of uh, saying, hey, you know what, it's OK if uh, latency isn't as great as we'd like it to be. We really want to preserve the integrity of that competitiveness. We don't want to change the skill value. And we want lower wait times. And so this is a way that we can do that. And so you can start to see how you can quickly build up rules that give you the flexibility to kind of control these different variables that you have to consider when uh, coming up with a matchmaking solution. In the second example now, um, let's say that in addition to low wait times and competitive matches, you actually want to split your players up into different geographical regions. You might have a reason for this. Let's say you've got a chat solution for your game, and you want to make sure that players can actually speak to one another. So they should be speaking the same literal language. And so you might want to uh, separate your players into different regions to help facilitate that. So again, uh, wait times and competitiveness, these are inversely proportional, right? You can wait longer for more competitive ma uh, match and vice versa. Um, but now one of the restrictions here is that you actually have less players to choose from in each of these pools. If you're breaking up your matchmaking by region now, there's, there's uh, fewer players in each region to choose from. So let's see what that looks like in practice. So here we have, again, our, our 14 AWS data centers that GameLift is currently a part of. And in this example, uh, we've set up matchmakers in three of these regions, kind of located geographically. Now players are going to be selected from within those regions, and then they're going to find a game server uh, within each of these regions to then place their match. So uh, again, the pros here are that uh, players are segregated by region. So up front, latency is less of a consideration. You can kind of focus on more of the skill and the wait time trade-offs that you might need to make. However, with fragmented player pools, uh, these wait times could increase, right? Again, you have less players to choose from, so wait times could go up. And in addition, uh, the competitiveness of matches could decrease. If you're having to wait longer, maybe you're relaxing these rules, and you're allowing players to play with one another that uh, might not normally do so. So again, lots of things to consider. And let's, uh, let's see now how FlexMatch can kind of help you to balance some of these considerations. So we'll take that same set that I, I showed you guys earlier. I'm not going to go through the, the details of that again. I'm just going to skip down here to the expansion section once more. And here you can see in this uh, example, now we've decided, hey, we're actually going to go ahead and relax that skill requirement. We've already segregated our player pools. We've got matches that are set up in different regions. So latency is probably going to be pretty low. So now we can uh, take a pass at, hey, uh, if after five seconds we're still not finding matches, take that uh, initial skill requirement of 10, and let's relax it a lot. Let's relax it to 50 in this case. And then after 15 seconds, we'll relax it again to 100. This essentially would say, hey, let's just let everybody be able to match with one another. So you can start out trying uh, to find those, those high competitiveness, uh, closely skill matched uh, matches. And then you can, again, relax over time based on what you decide as the developer. 
So we've covered a lot of ground so far. We've talked about how to balance wait times uh, with competitiveness and, and latency through a couple of examples. And now let's talk about how we have to balance cost on top of all of these other factors, right? So um, let's take a, a, a look at an example here. So uh, this graph here is meant to illustrate what might be a typical player demand curve for your game throughout the course of a 24-hour day. As you can see, we've got some, some troughs there where uh, you know, players are probably asleep. It's early in the morning, not a lot of folks playing. And then uh, as it ramps up into evening, you get a, a spike in player demand. So when you're first trying to set up your matchmaking for your game and, and anticipate the number of game servers that you're going to need for your game, you might go off and say, hey, you know what? Uh, looks like I'm going to guess my peak concurrency for players is going to be 7,000, let's say, from this example. So that means you'd go out and you'd buy 7,000 game servers to start with. And so what does that mean over time? Well, unfortunately, when players aren't connected, those servers are sitting idle. And so that's essentially wasted money. Um, in addition, let's say that your game is a lot more popular than you thought it was going to be. That's a, a good problem to have, right? But the, the challenge here now is you didn't buy enough servers up front. So now you're stuck with players that are sitting in long wait times while you've got uh, you know, hardware on back order. So what can we do about that? Ideally, we would like to be able to track that curve with our capacity. And with GameLift, that's exactly what we can do. So GameLift offers a feature called auto-scaling. Uh, and what you can do, like I was saying, is you can kind of auto-scale your capacity in response to things like player demand or wait times that you're seeing, uh, and signal uh, GameLift to start to spin up or spin down capacity. So you track much better against the overall uh, player demand with your capacity. And so what this results in is that same great player experience on launch day uh, at a fraction of the cost that you might incur if you just bought a bunch of servers up front and had a lot of them just sitting idle. OK, great. So we've talked about wait times. We've talked about uh, competitiveness. We've talked about latency. And we've talked about how you balance all those things with respect to cost. Finally, what happens in the real world with your matchmaking solution, right? So um, in the real world, things hardly ever go according to plan. And uh, what you'd like to be able to do is, is see how you can account for that uh, in the real world in real time. So now let's say, again, we've got our, our game server here. And we've got players connected to it. Uh, they're happily playing in a match. And all of a sudden, for some reason or another, one of the players drops out of the match. Maybe their ISP went down. Maybe they raged quit because they were having a bad game, right? All of a sudden now, you've got uh, the remaining players that are having an a, a impacted player experience, right? It's, it's not going to be as much fun. Your game is balanced to have just the right number of players in your match. And now all of a sudden, that player's dropped out, and, and you're wondering what to do. How do you keep that competitiveness up? So with FlexMatch, um, we offer a feature called Backfill. And what Backfill allows you to do is broadcast a request for that match so that you can essentially fill that hole uh, with the same rules and the same player, uh, player data that was used to originally create the match. And so in this case, uh, we've got a, a matchmaking request that goes to the same matchmaker with the same rule set, looks at all of the player data for the players specifically in this match, and says, hey, find me a player that's close to the other players in this match. And so that's exactly what FlexMatch can do. You get a player backfilled into the game, and now your players are happy again, right? Your game's full. Uh, that guy got into a match quickly, and things are going along uh, as, you, as you would expect. So again, we covered a lot of ground, right? We showed, how, um, it, we showed examples of some of the challenges in coming up with a flexible matchmaking solution, uh, including uh, low cost, um, low latency, flexibility, uh, reliability. These are all things that you need to balance. Uh, matchmaking takes these uh, different variables into consideration, and many times these things are at odds with one another. You, as the developer, need to figure out what the right balance is for your game. And with FlexMatch, you have the ability to do just that. You can quickly prioritize what's important in your matchmaking design to provide matches that are fast, full, and fun for your players. So that's what I have for my talk today. Uh, next steps, uh, please register at our booth, explore Amazon Game Tech. You can earn points, you can win loot. It's a pretty cool deal. Uh, you can actually try Amazon Game Lift for free uh, by visiting amazon.com slash game lift to find more information. If you have any other questions for me specifically, uh, that's my email address. And I'm actually going to be at the kiosk here, uh, kiosk number 14, right after this talk. So if you want to dive in with any questions you might have, I'm, I'm happy to chat it up with you. Um, at that, uh, that kiosk. So thank you again for, uh, for, for your time. I appreciate that. 
And again, uh, we've got my kiosk here, quickly build and optimize custom matchmaking solutions. That's number 14. You can learn about how to protect your game servers from DDoS attacks at kiosk 15. At kiosk 16, you can learn about building and deploying your own global game servers. And one that's not up here that I would also highly recommend my colleagues over at uh, kiosk 17 can dive into GameLift itself and talk to you uh, GameLift kind of 101 style and give you all the details that you might want um, at, that, at that kiosk. So again, thank you.